to go back to the kind of the beginning when the first time I went to the island of Madeira because none of this would have happened. Uh, Save the Waves wouldn't exist if it weren't for the things that happened on that island. I don't know that I've ever seen a place so magical in my life, like something out of a fairy tale. And it was totally my, uh, my place of, of solace, right? My friends and I said, ah, there's one place that's actually probably gonna be really good. It's a little village called Lugar de Baiju. So we roll up there and lo and behold, the waves are perfect. Well, we paddled out and while we were out in the water, there was a big excavator on the shore and it's literally dropping its bucket into the lineup. I get out of the water and I start talking to one of the kids there, like, what are they doing? And the kid said, oh, you haven't heard? They're building a harbor here. And I said, you mean right here on the wave? He goes, yeah, this wave is not even gonna be here in a couple months. That news really, um, really hit me directly in the heart because in 1966, they built the Dana Point Harbor on top of what was or one of Orange County's best waves. And it disappeared because there weren't enough surfers to fight against the proposal and to try and preserve the surf spot. I felt like I was standing in a place that was destined to become the next killer Dana. So I started making phone calls. I called Sam George, the guy who wrote the article, who was then the editor of Surfer Magazine, and told him what was going on. And he said, well, actually this really good friend of mine, a French guy, told me about the waves. Uh, that's when I met Gibus de Soltre, pretty famous French surfer. He's also the editor of Surf Session and the Surfer's Journal in France. And then he said, um, I should probably introduce you to a good, a good friend of mine in the US. I think he might be able to help you. It's a guy named Yvon Chouinard. And I said, Yvon Chouinard? You mean like Patagonia? He said, yeah, I think he can help. And I called Yvonne and I was so nervous, but I told him what was going on. And his response was, I'll write you a $5,000 check, personal check, and I'm gonna put it in the mail tomorrow. I want you to go over there and I want you to do everything you can to figure out how to stop this. I did TV interviews, uh, newspaper interviews. I met with government officials. Uh, so that was a big victory. Uh, 5,000 bucks went a long way. But Jardim de Mar thing is where, you know, we learned some tough lessons. The president of Madeira, he started saying that surfers were barefoot tourists and uh, they didn't spend any money, they just camped on the beach. Interesting, because the opposite is of course true. And I decided that to just be a person doing all this wasn't so smart. I should be a representative of a, an international nonprofit organization. And so I, it was literally at that moment, I was the executive director of Save the Waves Coalition and I was there on a mission. And what I love about Save the Waves now is that they're doing the kind of proactive work I always hoped the organization would be able to do. Save the Waves became you know, synonymous with you know, coastal protection preservation. You know, what a wave actually you know, brings, even though you may not be a surfer, you know, people don't really realize you know, the type of economic engine that it can be for a community. So it is educating and empowering you know, communities to establish formal legal protection so you're safeguarding these areas from any future you know, potential threats or development until our coastlines are you know, fully protected. I know that you know, Save the Waves uh, is never going to stop you know, reaching out and trying to, to grow and expand uh, and keep the work going.